Okay. So here we have this problem that we're going to work. Let me get rid of this extra problem here. So we're trying to solve this equation, but it has fractions in it. So remember, we have to clear the fractions first. In order to clear the fractions, what do we need? We need the LCD. So we go to our rules, and in order to find the LCD, what do you have to do? We well, have to use all of the factors that are present in the denominators that are given to you. So what, what I have is I see an R plus 7 and I see an R minus 2, but then I see this trinomial here. So you're going to have to factor, right? So we factor the trinomial so that we can identify the LCD for this particular problem. So the LCD is R plus 7 and R minus 2. Most of the problems you're going to see, they'll probably have the LCD, the factors present in the other denominators. So I like to rewrite the problem with the factor denominators. Okay, and then what do we do? We multiply every term by the LCD. Because what is our goal? Our goal is to get rid of these denominators. All right. So, the r plus 7s canceled each other out, r minus 2. So, my first fraction just leaves me with 4r minus 4. In the second fraction, the r plus 7s cancel. The 2 stays and is multiplied times r minus 2 equals the r minus 2s cancel here. And that leaves me with r plus 7. 1 times r plus 7. So 4r minus 4 plus, we're going to distribute. Alright, so now we're going to try to combine like terms. So 6r minus 8 equals 1r plus 7. So I don't have any exponents here, right? No exponents are present, so I'm just using my chapter 2 rules, right? So once you cleared the fractions... Everything else under after you've cleared the fractions is just almost chapter 2 material, essentially, for this problem. So I'm going to get my R's together. And then I'm going to get my values together. I'm going to divide both sides by 5 because I want to isolate R. So R is equal to 3. Okay? And again, you can always take that 3, substitute it into the original problem, and check your solution um, to make sure it's correct. But then you also must, must, must always check to make sure the solution is not something that would create an undefined outcome. So when I look at r equal to 3, I look at my denominators here. And so I look to see if I substitute 3 in for the r, if it would create a 0 anywhere, and it would not. 3 plus 7, 3 minus 2, 3 plus 7, 3 minus 2. So it would never create a 0. So what's that mean? That means that r equal to 3 is a solution, can be a solution, and is the solution to the equation. Okay? All right, let's do another one. All right, so here we have this equation. We need to get rid of these fractions. First, we're going to have to identify the LCD so we can multiply everybody by it. So, I'm going to have to factor this. And again, I'm going to use these other two denominators to help me figure out the factors of the trinomial. So, factors of 6, that'll give me a 1. 3 and 2. 3 is plus, 2 is minus. So, LCD is x plus 3, x minus 2. So, I'm going to rewrite my problem. I didn't need those parentheses. I'll just keep doing that. So then I'm going to multiply everybody by the LCD. And I'm going to cancel. So x plus 3 is canceled, which leaves x plus 1 times x minus 2. That's why I write the parentheses so that you understand that when everything, when you cancel the denominators, whatever is left is multiplied to whatever is still there at the top as well. 
So equals x plus 3 is cancel. X minus 2 is cancel, so equals x squared minus 11x minus x minus 2 is cancel here. X minus 3 times x plus 3. All right. So we have a lot of distributing to do on this problem. So here we go x squared minus 2x plus 1x minus 2 x squared minus 11x minus I'm just going to distribute here x squared plus 3x minus 3x minus 9 this is a tedious problem so these threes canceled out so I'm left with x squared minus 9, and then I just distributed that negative. So x squared minus 1x minus 2 equals x squared minus x squared cancels out. So I'm left with negative 11x plus 9. So I still have an x squared term on the left side, so that means that I have to get everything equal to 0, because if you have something that has an exponent other than a 1, on your variable component, that means you're going to have to solve by factoring. So I'm going to make this equation equal 0 so that I can factor it. So I would have to move my 11x and move my 9. So x squared plus 10x minus 11 equals 0. So I'm going to factor it. So factors of 11 are just 1 and 11. That will give me a 10. So plus 11 minus 1. So, this is just me finishing over here. So, 11 plus, x plus 11 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. So, x equals negative 11, and x equals 1. And that would be your solutions, negative 11 and 1. And when you check them in the denominators, it will not create 0 in any of those denominators. So, it can, you can use those. And if you want to check your solution, you can always substitute them, actually substitute them into the given equation and check your work to see if they are correct. Okay? And that is how you would do that problem. So this problem got long here around this part right here because it got tedious. So you just have to be careful with your signs. You should always distribute as much as possible first. And then distributing of the negative should be done last. So the plus 3x minus 3x canceled each other out. That left the x squared minus 9 that I then distributed to get negative x squared plus a 9. And then these x squares canceled each other out. So just pay attention to that and just take your time. Because it's very easy to make mistakes on these problems. Okay? Alright, let's look at one more. Five over x minus six equals x minus x over equals x over x minus two. So we want to be able to clear these fractions. So we would do that by finding the LCD. So the LCD here would just be x minus six times x minus two. So we would multiply every term. So when we do that, because remember the goal is still to get rid of the fractions, we would cancel. x minus x cancels, so 5 times x minus 2 is left. Equals x minus 2 cancels with x minus 2, so x times x minus 6 is left. Okay, so then we're just going to figure out how to start solving this. So I'm going to distribute, so I'm going to simplify as much as possible. Alright, so when I distribute, I see that I end up with something with an exponent other than a 1. So I have an x squared term on this problem. What does that mean to you? It means I'm going to have to factor to solve this problem. That's what it means. And so once you know you have to factor it, using uh, solve it by factoring, your mindset has to go into those set of directions. What does it mean when you have to solve by factoring? It means that you have to set the equation equal to zero. So you have to get everything on one side and then factor the equation. So when I look at this problem, my x squared term is already positive where it is. So I always want my x squared term to be positive. So that means everybody else is going to come to his side. So I'm going to move the 5x by subtracting it. 
and I'm going to add the 10. So I get 0 equals x squared minus 11x plus 10. I'm going to rewrite it. And I'm going to factor. So 10 and 1 is negative, negative. Because factors of 10, that'll give me an 11. Factors of 10 would be 10 and 1, 2 and 5. The pair that could give 11 is the 10 and the 1, and they both would be negative. So then I'm going to split those two um, factors up and set them each individually equal to 0. So I get x is 10 and x is 1. And that's it. Again, I can substitute it in to check. So they both check so you know it's correct so again you can always check your work but the main thing is to always make sure you check to see if any of your solutions create zeros in the denominators and they clearly didn't so I was good to go okay so that's 7.5 so I'm gonna do the same problem but I'm gonna do it over using 7.6 material okay so 7.6 deals with proportions and problem solving so proportions first of all let's define that this is a basic math concept proportions it's basically two rational expressions that are equal to each other or two ratios that are equal to each other so a over b equals c over d and the cross products are equal to each other when you have a proportion so a times d must always equal b times c so let me just give you a basic example one-half equals four-eighths so these are proportions because if we do cross products we do one times eight would equal two times four which would be eight equals eight so anytime you have a proportion where you have one rational expression equal to another rational expression you can use the definition of a proportion to solve your problem so what I mean by that is forty five over x equals five over seven this is a proportion so in the previous section seven five we just learned how to be able to solve this by identifying the LCD and getting rid of the fractions what seven point six is saying is oh but if you have a proportion equation you know a proportion where you have just two fractions equal to each other you don't have to do the LCD process you can use the rule and the definition of a proportion to solve the equation so what that means is we can just do 45 times 7 must equal x times 5 so 45 times 7 is 315 equal to 5x and then we just solve for, for x so we divide both sides by 5 so we get x is 63 and that's it okay now I'm gonna still show you the way that we would have done it using the 7.5 rules just because so we have 45 over X equals 5 over 7 we would have to identify the LCD in this case the LCD would be just what each factor that's con all factors contained in each denominator so X and a 7 so 7x would be the LCD your rule says to then multiply each term by that LCD so when I do that what would happen here well the X's would cancel I would be left with 45 times 7 the 7's would cancel I would be left with 4 times X oh 5 times X oh my god look at that <laughs> what math I know it's awesome okay so this is just when you have proportions it just saves you a little time you can just do the cross products and then be able to solve your problem the same way so let's look back at the example we just did from the 7-5 and apply the rules for proportions to solve it alright so this is the problem that we had just done 
Um, so now we're just going to use the rules from 7, 6 to be able to finish this problem. So what we do here is we just cross multiply. So what's the cross multiplication? This times that, that times that. So 5 times x minus 2 would equal x times x minus 6. And then we would just simplify and solve. I have an x squared term, so that means I'm going to have to factor. So, 10, 1, minus, minus. So, x equals negative 10, x equals 1. doesn't make sense because it was a minus 10 hold on there we go so x equals 10 and positive 1 so you can use your LCD or you can use your definition of proportions in order to solve the proportion problems okay that's all you're doing let's do another one all right, so you have x plus 1 over 2x plus 3 is equal to 2 over 3. So you pause it and you work that problem. And you can do it either way you want. You can see if you can do the proportion method or see if you can do the other way. I'm going to do the proportion method. We definitely want to try to do the proportion method because it is set up in that easy manner where you don't have to worry about identifying the LCD and everything. So try that problem. Alright, so when we work this problem, we should cross multiply. So we get 3 times x plus 1 equals 2 times 2x plus 3. So then we distribute. When I distribute, I don't have any squared terms. So that means I'm not going to have to solve by factoring. So I just get my x values together, and then I figure out how to isolate my x, which I do, and I get x is equal to negative 3. And that's it. Alright, so that's 7.6 with your proportions and your problem solving. Well, your proportions. The problem solving, I'll put on another video.